David Hill joins us now. David, welcome back to The Drum. Thank you. Now, as the head of uh, Soccer Australia back in 1998, you actually voted for Blatter and Australia backed Blatter for the next 17 years. Why did you vote for him? Well, at the time, 1998, Blatter was running for the first time as president. There were two good candidates, Johansson from Sweden and Blatter, and as uh, the board of Soccer Australia sat down and we made an assessment, we thought Blatter was marginally the better of two good candidates. But within his first term, his chief executive of FIFA, Michel Zenrufenen, resigned and gave a 25-page dossier of sworn testimony to the Swiss police implicating Blatter in the improper payment of large sums of FIFA money. We knew from 2002 uh, that, that uh, there were serious allegations against Blatter and I think Football Australia has done a fantastic job in recent years but continuing to vote for Blatter is a black mark. Because it wasn't not only 2002, in 1999, David Yallop released a book called How They Stole the Game, which uh, outlined allegations that Blatter had uh, given bribes to get votes in that 1998 election. There was, of course, Andrew Jennings' work. It, it, look, there's all been these allegations, but it wasn't until Michelle Zenrufenen gave a sworn affidavit to the Swiss police where he detailed, for example, after the 98 election, where Jack Warner, the corrupt Jack Warner from CONCACAF, delivered, delivered about 35 Caribbean country votes uh, for Blatter. Uh, Blatter instructed uh, FIFA to make a 10 million US dollar loan, unsecured, to CONCACAF, to an account nominated by, by uh, Jack Warner. And four months later, Blatter instructs Zen Rufinen to write the loan off as a bad debt. So why did Australia keep backing him for so long? Well, I, I think that's got to be answered. But I, I, I think Australia should now make amends by being at the forefront of, of pushing proactively for the reform of FIFA, for, for integrity in its processes and transparency in its decision making. How do you do that? How do you push for reform? Well, I think we should join the other good guys. I think we've been embarrassed by what the Americans have done. Uh, the FBI and the IRS are laying these charges against only about corruption that's occurred on American soil, uh, which, even though it's huge, these recent arrests, it's only North America. And you'd be naive to think, uh, which is only a fraction of FIFA, you'd be naive to think uh, that the corruption doesn't go further than that. I, I think what's happened so far is only the tip of a giant iceberg. And I think uh, the English have shown some good leadership in this, by suggesting if Blatter didn't go, <coughs> pardon me, they'd be looking at uh, organising other European nations to boycott World Cup soccer tournaments. Yeah. And I think Australia should say, yes, let's put our hand up, we'll be part of this reform process as well. Jack? The sponsors, are Sorry. the sponsors able to sort of drive that change? Because they're the ones been feeding the money machine. That's right. Um, look, the, the FIFA have one great product. It's the World Cup every four years and the lucrative decision as to who hosts it, the television rights and the sponsorship. I think Blatter's been... Un I don't think Blatter, having fought hard... He's a desperate man. Uh, having fought hard and won the ballot yet again the other day to resign so quickly, one of two things, or maybe both, have happened. One is the sponsors have said, we've had enough. Mm. We don't want our product contaminated by FIFA. Or, more likely, I think... The FBI are investigating and have got their... Mm. I think Blatter's resigned one step ahead of the sheriff. Yeah. Well, it might be an academic exercise, but, but what is the problem here? Is the organi does the organisation corrupt individuals or are there corrupt individuals like Blatter that, that take the organisation? The short answer is I think uh, FIFA has a culture of corruption mm. that people voting for a president have an expectation they'll be paid for it. Mm. And a lot of that payment is honest and fair income, where in return for the support a new president gets, he will make money available for the junior development of soccer in a poor third world country. Yeah. But too often the money's gone into the private bank account of the soccer officials. Yeah. And there's this expectation, not that you're voting for somebody who will do the right thing by soccer, yeah. but you're voting for somebody because there's a payback for your vote. Now, David, uh, Andrew Jennings, the journalist who's, whose work led to these uh, indictments, told Lateline last night that uh, Frank Lowy should resign from the FFA, should heads roll at the FFA for not taking due diligence about where taxpayers' money ended up. 
I think this sort of sack lowey is a bit harsh. Uh, if I can use an old piece of soccer terminology, uh, I'd rather we played the ball rather than the man. I certainly think uh, what's needed, and I think Xenophon's right, if not the Auditor General, then the Federal Police. Football Australia spent over $45 million worth of taxpayers' money on the failed bid to host the World Cup in uh, 2022. One vote for it. We got one vote. We got one vote. Mm. God only knows how corrupt we would have had to have been to got a second or more votes. But we're being betrayed. I mean, the FFA has betrayed them. But we still don't know. We still don't know where all the money went. We do know that half a million dollars of all the countries in the world that we could help. Why would we put half a million dollars into youth development, mm. football development into Trinidad and Tobago? Answer, it's Jack run Warner. by that crook, Jack Warner, mm. and the money went into Jack Warner's bank account. And of all the countries, why did we do that? We did it because we were trying to buy a vote. OK, but what about the hiring of um, Peter Hargitay and Fedor Radman, two men that uh, Andrew Jennings has re- referred to as con men? Why would they have been hired by the FFA if it wasn't to negotiate their way around a system that was not entirely above board? True. I, but I, I think we have to. Uh, I think we deserve an explanation of what happened to the money. Mm. And those two guys, of course, did the spending. 